so once again, we're waiting for the lights from the front row. Pole position, actually. The 2002 Austrian Grand Prix. And that tail will go good start, didn't it? Ooh, try to hold on the outside. Oh, he did. And I have my niche goes from third to second, and... Well, that Honda on the other side of the grid. Hey, he got a me style start. So yeah, so we actually turned out to get a decent start here for the 71 lap race at Spielberg. No dent in destruction so far. Though we did butcher that corner, so yeah. That's something. One of the shortest tracks on the F1 calendar was then. Still is. I think, I think it's possibly shorter than Monaco. Lap time wise, it definitely is. Like, we're doing about 110 laps here. Here. And, like, we're, we're idiots. So. This could be end up being one of the faster Grand Prix. This is quite a fast track, even for a short track, with all the straights. Essentially, it's a three-sided square with a squiggly bit in the middle. Even though the straight is kind of squiggly, as it is. <laughs> but there'll be 71 laps of not spinning in this corner right here. Turn three, absolute bitter corner. That's our main goal of this race is to spin less than, I don't know, it will be, be generous to say, less than three times. If you spin less than three times, I get nachos or something like that. Sounds like a reasonable deal. You know, I could just say screw you and get nachos anyway. There are many possibilities to how this works out. And you can prove none of them. Because by the time this goes out, it'll be about three weeks after I recorded it, so. Nachos will have been had anyway. Driving today in Umbertello's Ferrari. Guy who should have won this race in real life, but thanks to some controversy that meant that the race was remembered at all, otherwise people would have just forgotten as another boring race, really. Yeah, so thanks to some team order controversy that meant that Schumacher took the win. For some reason. Like, one thing I don't understand about the whole scenario is why Schumacher had, had to win here. Like, it, the only reason I can see is eternal politics because it doesn't make sense, really, otherwise. I know we've got hindsight and said, oh yeah, he would go on to win about nearly all the other races in the season, but even so, he'd won most of the races on the way here, so it's like. And yeah, there's no reason, real reason, just to give him another win, you know, for the hell of it. Really. Like, he doesn't have a championship rival. But are you just going to curb stomp it, like they do every year? So, I don't know. Basically, if we Twitter back then, it would have been a shit fest. As it is now, some things never change. F1 fans. Literally never change. Pine for the past, bitch about the present, and I don't know. Say that the future should be the past. Anyway, that was our conversation that I probably won't finish. Even in the fucking hour and a half that we have here. Actually, not sure how long this race should be. I reckon it'll be one of the short ones. Because I said earlier how fast this track is. So we should get through the 71 laps reasonably quickly, actually. Could be looking at our narrow 20 minute race here. Which is nice. Means I should be theoretically less hungry at the end of this race than I would be on a normal race. This race is panning out quite well, though. We're in the lead from pole. Survived the attacks at turn 1. Didn't get involved in any shenanigans and. I was second and third, battled it out. 
we're putting we're putting time into them. Leaving them for dust, really. First few laps, I've already put three seconds into my niche. I'm continuing to put on time. Fortunately, I mean we can take it easy in turn three, so I don't risk spinning. Because I really don't want to push there. Not if it's absolutely necessary. Because well, if I start pushing to try to put out a gap for no reason, we'll just end up spinning. And if I have to overtake anyone there, I'll just go Rosberg on full lock there. No one wants to go full lock. Never go full lock. Damn, I've been infested by the memes. Save me, F1. Why am I calling to F1 to save me? Seems like a bad plan. Such as shifting a second there, that would have blown an engine. Be damage on. <laughs> and if we, even if we had damage on, I would have turned mechanical damage off because after the last update, these engines are quite sensitive. Not sure if they fix it, but a lot of engines were blowing up for really no reason at all. Like even you look at them and they catch fire. Which I know that was a big part of F1 at this time. You know, engines did just spontaneously combust for no logical reason. But, you know, kind of sucks in the game. Because at least then, you know, at least you've got a few laps in an F1 car. Like a real F1 car. Whereas here, so like, huh, engine blow. That was a bit of a waste of time. I imagine it would be cool to, like, do a proper sort of F1 style championship with maybe yeah, at least half length races, but if not full length races. You know, with all the settings turned on for that. Go all the realism. Fun. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. No. How come I never come to that topic? It always comes back to how uh, sim races think that sadness is fun. And then how and that always leads to them being a depressed group of punts, really. Ooh. Anyway. Wow, well, we put four seconds into them. Wow. Well, I did not expect this. As you may have guessed by now, I usually take several attempts to record these things. And this is my last attempt at this. Yeah, I was not doing this. This is... This is excessive. Wow. But I'm not going to stop because I'm probably going to spin out, go back into the pack anyway, and I'll be damn glad of whatever gap I can put into them now. So we will continue on. Right, no reason to push yet. Use all the curbs and all the track there. Because why the hell not? So yeah, this should really just be a cruise now from this point on. Barring any mistakes. I say that to cover myself because turn three will claim me one of these laps. Now, I'm not even going to pretend we're going to avoid, we are going to spin. So I'd like to have a bit of a gap before we spin. Because I'm sick of, you know, having the pace to do really well in these races. And then throwing it away because I don't have the stamina, the consistency, or the general not suckingness. It's really the main thing about these races, and the main skill of actual racing drivers is, you know, consistently putting down laps for the length of a race. You know, consistently not making mistakes. You yeah. know? That they really have to be pushed to make a mistake. And the quality of drivers usually how far they are pushed before they make a mistake. How far they can go. It's like the whole point of endurance racing, really. And, yeah, I'm surprised and sucking at it, considering how much I like endurance racing. 
I like, you know, liking something does not meant to give you skill. It just makes you more annoyed when you suck at it. And we seem to be consistently putting on laps here. Consistently pulling away. At least half a second to lap. Madness. Absolute madness. It's almost like we're driving a real Ferrari. Yeah, this must be what Schumacher felt like. Just like, oh, no, not gonna keep up today. Oh well. I fear I wonder why I keep popping up and down the field in this series. After Imbla, I did turn down the AI and kind of left it there. Uh, but I saw an Imbla, it didn't make much fucking difference. And last race in Spain, uh, I just threw it away anyway. But I was, but I still would, I, even if I kept it clean, I was not going to win that race on pace. I just didn't have it really, to be honest. Uh, a podium, but I wouldn't have won. So I'm, I might uh, probably turn it up next race, and then suck, which, you know. So also part you keep it in line where these cars should be. I know that the actual differences between the cars are not simulators. You know, we're all driving essentially the same car, and the skins do not relate to uh, the talents of the drivers or the speed of the cars, like they were in real life, but still, if I'm driving a Ferrari, I want to be a front of the field. When I'm driving a Minardi, I don't mind when I'm at the back. It's like, yeah, it's a Minardi. It shouldn't be to be doing much better, should it? Speaking of cars I need to drive, I should probably get into the Arrows cars before they collapse mid-season. Spoilers. For an F1 season that was literally 15 years ago, which is the whole point of the series, but not that anyone was shedding a tear or Holding a candlelit vigil for the anniversary 2002 season, or the demise of Arrows Grand Prix. I took that corner, but it's easy. Also, those of you who know, who know this track from the likes of a set of course, or even how it's run nowadays, uh, you probably know some differences. Oh, there's the obvious off-track differences, such as different grandstands and things like that. Mainly because this is the interesting thing about this track in Armored Lisa is that it's based on Spielberg from approximately a year or two before they actually got the Grand Prix. Like it, was, it went, to, it went into Stock Car Extreme. It was released for that. That's think in 13, 2013 was it? I know, it could be in 14, after the first, yeah it was, it was after the, just before, it was a year or two before the Austrian Grand Prix came back, it should have been 15 if, I'm, if I remember correctly, I think it was 15, or 14, I don't know, anyway, well, it's based on before they did all the upgrades and the true money at it to host the Grand Prix again. Which means on one hand, it doesn't have faster curbs, like the modern version does on exits. Though in some corners it has, I would say, harsher curbs than the current version. Because they have little, little yellow speed bumps that are, that are quite high in the last corner and turn one. Which is why turn one actually in this version it's a bit it's like slower than it is in the modern version. Well, in driving it's like it's easier. Though you don't have the massive speed bump on the outside of the corner. So, yeah, if you want, you can still take it the same way as you do in the modern version. But instead of cutting it tighter, you just go wide because there's no curb there. So, fortunately for us going for our immersion, it should uh, be closer to the what it was like in the early 2000s than it is nowadays. So that's nice. That probably didn't make any sense to anyone, what I just said. You know, about any of that, but it's little details. Some people would be like, it's the same layout, 
it hasn't changed since the track was shortened in the, in the early 90s. So, what the hell are you on about? I don't even know what the hell I'm on about. So, yeah. There we go. Also, I'm going to completely flash over the fact that I nearly killed the car and turned one back there. No one needs to know about that. We can move on. Despite the, the, that nearly killing ourselves in turn one, we're still five seconds ahead. And I think that's a good gap. Because if I try and push any further, I'll probably spin. And I don't really want to let them come back because I'll probably spin anyway. And I'd like to have five seconds in hand so that we at least come out immediately behind them and we can essentially get the lead back. But who knows. How long in are we? Because laps go by faster, as you'd expect. Now, on lap 14, 20 minutes in, or nearly 20 minutes in, we're not going to threaten the time limit at all this race, as we usually don't. Because we don't have the threat of rain or really red flags or anything like that to threaten the time limit. And because the field stretches out, we don't we usually don't get safety cars or anything like that. Also, it seems these F1 drivers are pretty good at keeping on track. It's probably because there are no talent files for these. For these skins. Uh, I reckon if, if you've done the talent files properly, you get a bit more, you know, variation with the drivers. Obviously, you get the proper order that we should be in speed wise but you'd also get you know the drivers that are good and the drivers that are not so good and be exposed for what they are I'm not sure why I shifted down a second there, but it seemed to work that time. It wasn't usually. So that's nice. Alright, so my pace is more or less settled with the cars behind. Could be that uh, Magnish has gotten clear of that Honda, so he's just settling into his race pace. We've obviously been just basically consistently just doing our thing up here it's so just plowing ahead for whatever we're doing and it's more or less it hey fun so exciting it's almost as if the car protests like oh you want excitement fuck it I'll try to spin you out give Valens and Temp to two as well a two a two is not a word That curve there is like nearly useless because of how short it is. Like you can only like do use the last little bit of it. And even then it's probably faster not to, because you've got to instantly, you know, jink out to not hit the grass. Because grass is bad, kids. Don't do it. I see like a back pain, I heard it's good for that. It's nice scenic. Spielberg is one of the more pretty tracks in the world. And I've completely messed up that corner. And if you think I bailed out that early, if I attempted to hit that corner, I would have just spun. And that would have been more embarrassing. I'm not sure what is more embarrassing. 
more or less going straight on like it did or spinning out. I reckon it's spinning out because there you toss that making that corner as possible. Whereas if you go straight on, you, you miss at being defeated. Let's just get this over with as quickly and cleanly as we have. Speak, speak about trying not to get wheels in the grass. Put wheels in the grass anyway. Sometimes that mistake costs us time, but it looks like we're more or less able to instantly, you know, pull out the gap if we want to again. It was quite a dominating race. Like, you know, we, I reckon we don't have, we don't have a huge amount of pace in hand or defeat. It's nothing huge. But it's just demonstrating how you don't need a huge advantage. To hold a huge advantage, if you know what I mean. Because essentially, the fact that we got clear immediately at the race start. You know, after two corners, we were away from the field. Even though we were much faster on pure pace than the guys behind us. Because they were fighting and holding each other up. We just eked out our advantage. And now that we're ahead. Even though... At most, we are half second faster. We can hold. You know, we can hold a five second gap if we want to. Because, you know, does Because even if we're only a tenth faster, that's an extra tenth every lap. It's also they're going to lose a tenth every lap. You know, it's just simple, it's just simple logic, really. If we're going at the same speed as the guys behind, they're obviously not getting closer. Simple as that. Nearly overcomplicating there, but that's all we're doing. Like, really, literally, just holding the same gas. We're only the only time fluctuations are well, when at start, when Magnish was getting attacked by that Honda, and we were. You know, pushing hard to get away at the start of the race. And then it's only gone back to Minish because we've made mistakes, which has been the point. And oh, look at that. That's way too early for an actual pit stop, so that must have been damage. And I would hazard a guess these two may have had it coming together. But look at this! We're gonna lap people! Isn't this exciting? Of course, they do this after I say, ah, oh, the AI are too perfect. You know, they never make mistakes, and, well, obviously, these two, these two made a hand of it. Either that, or they're putting some sort of crazy pit stop strategy on me. I hope it's not that. I was not prepared for such things. Of course, this is exactly what Mignish wants behind. Because this is the only way he'll close up is if he can navigate these guys faster than I can, which... You know, that's a factor well in, in real racing, but... I can tell you right now, he won't, because... The AI can't lap... Uh, lapped cars in this game, so... Well, not officially. Mainly because uh, lapped cars don't act like lapped cars in F1. Yeah, to take the sports car rule of, well, I'm just going to drive, and if you want to get past me, do it. And I did. Speaking of that, th apparently those idiots in Sky are shouting that for a while. You know, that, you know, get rid of the car, it has to give way to the to leaders, that sort of thing. It's like the rule is like you, you can pass 
three marshal posts who show blue flags and, and by that point you have to have given up the place to the lapping car and then we shout, nah, get rid of that bullshit Look the lap car's attack which is the most ill-thought-out crap and knee-jerk reaction and pointless rule change that I've ever heard but it should be actually the most stupid thing I've ever heard but this is F1 and it's full of all these shitty ideas and the worst thing is they regularly enforce them like for example it was this week which was the date when I'm recording this uh, they announced that uh, sharpens will only banned from next year why? Eh, I don't know they banned T-Bank wings which that's fair you know it's sort of a thing that should is, first of all it's a loophole that shouldn't exist it only existed, but I, get, and I would hazard a guess, but the FIA never got to admit it existed because of a misprint or an oversight in their original rules. Considering, but considering how they came about, and you know, it's the man mainly on the basis of safety that look, they're stupid uh, because they can't be, you know, they've fallen off several times. And rather than write three volumes of rules on making them structurally sound, we can just ban them, have done with. Which makes sense. That's common sense. Of course, you can't have common sense when dealing with F1. So they have to counter it with some illogical ideas, such as, well, let's ban shark wings altogether. Why? I don't know. The shark wings haven't been a problem. They haven't fallen off yet. Not any more than regular engine covers fall off. Oh, thanks guy. It's not like I'm leading a race or anything. I can go full special in Vettel on this guy's ass. But yeah, just bend sharpens all together. Why? Because they don't look pretty, is the main reason. Says who? I don't know. It's just stupid. Maybe. It also doesn't help with the, the pointless rules would make the cars look better and go faster. Shark fins, you know, arguably they make the cars look worse. You know, I personally think they make their creation to make the cars look faster. But yes personal opinion is subjective. But if they're gonna ban them on looks, why have they not still not done anything about the noses? You know? It's like you can't ban them on aesthetics and allow the current uh, noses on a lot of the fields. Now, why don't you do something to deal with that? Makes no sense. Seems to me is seeing that they're banning it because Red Bull wants to be banned. And Red Bull have had a slow car, haven't they? So, basically, they're trying to easy fit and going. Ah, uh, come on, we're just going to keep whining because we want the rules to work for us because we didn't build a car to these rules and we suck because of that. So we're going to change the rules until we get rules that we're good at. Which is not how this fucking shit works. The rules are set. You build a good car or you don't build a good car. If you don't build a good car, you get good or you stay last. Simple. And that's how the sports work. You don't hear in football teams with good defences calling for, I don't know, forwards to be banned. So that they can capitalise on having good defence. You don't call it. You, you don't hear that shit happening. And if they did, they'd be laughed out of it. So, what are you talking about, idiots? Yet yeah, that's how we were making works in Formula 1. God, I can't wait for the strategy group to go away. Like it's a nice idea in theory, but you need a level of sportsmanship and respect between all parties involved for that to work out, and that never happens. Way too much at stake for them to work for the common interest, because it's not fun for them. It's a way of making money and getting power and getting glory. They're not doing it for the fun, they're doing it for the money, for the power.
Whoa. At least we hit the curb, hit them um, with the tire. If you hit the square with the tire, you can get away with it like that. Obviously, it's not good, and it's not fast and lose time doing it, but it's better than spinning out, right? As you see with the gap below, Magnitia's not getting past that Renault, maybe. That's what I was on about. That when it comes to lapping traffic, we are going to do much better than the AI are going to do it. Like, significantly better. That's something that could be slightly improved in 1.4. I have to see, I'll keep an eye on what they, how the AI behave in the beta. To see if the improvements are going to be real this time. Like, I trust that the, the game, the AI in this game have improved since, you know, he say a year ago. That if you were to compare them to how they did a year ago, you'd be like, ah, that's quite improved. We don't tend to be really notice big differences in patches. So now we're just fucking gaming the system, really. And as Manish gets held up, though, he's probably gonna let third place catch back up to him. As, oh. as this happened, and now they're going to battle again while I'm just out here. No one's at me, no pressure. Just calmly going around. Just a fucking Sunday drive, really. Like, look at this. Nice and chilled. Only seven laps in. Only thirty laps in. We're nearly halfway. How long have we gone? We're nearly gone halfway. This will be a quick Grand Prix, which is good because there's not much happening here. Could literally be a podcast. I say could be because when I'm talking it's shite. When I'm talking. So I wouldn't call it the best podcast in the world. The one thing that we can take away from this is now that I've, I now have built up so much of a gap, I could probably spin out a turn tree. And now that I said it, I give myself three laps. In three laps, I will spin a turn tree. Obviously, I won't do it intentionally. What's going to happen now? I've cursed it. We are going to spin. Now, spice things up. A shitty way of spicing things up, but I don't know. Or maybe today will be the day. The day that I finally don't spin. That I hold it together for a Grand Prix. That we finally do 300 kilometers in Grand Prix car and not mess it up. That's asking a bit much, isn't it? Yeah, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Judging by the drop in frame rate, sir, the game's going to physically object to me doing it. It's gonna be like, no, mate, you're gonna crash. Either on track or we're gonna take the game down. Cause a crash. Player got good. Speaking of, it's actually been, been behaving quite well so far. Maybe finally getting around to defragging my disk this month was a good idea. Turns out having 200 gigs of fragmented files is not good for you. The more you know.
There's a battle going on on that side of the track. Of course, one of the nice things about this track is because it's so short and quite compact, you can, as I drive off track, as you do, you know, normal things, uh, you can actually look over to quite a lot of the track. I imagine it's quite good for spectating, which makes it odd that I seem to be having trouble getting people to actually show up here. Like, if we're within reasonable distance of this track, and you want to go to a Grand Prix, why the hell wouldn't you? Like, it's so... First off, it's such a nice area. You know, take the week off, make a holiday, but you know, Because, you know, I can easily imagine that you go to the race and maybe after it, you know, keep it on the road and just go off somewhere else and just... Well, it's such a nice part of the world. I need to get back to uh, Central Europe again, don't I? I do now. Alright, that's in the plans. Uh, but, you know, such a nice place. It's a quite a nice track. It's small, so... It's gonna be good for spectating, as I mess up this corner again. I need to get good. Maybe this is my penance to allow McNish to get back. You know, make this a bit more fair. I don't know. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't go to a Grand Prix here. They might sort of. They might fascination with this place is a bit weird. Am I like the only one who likes this place or something? Sometimes it seems that way. I don't get the hate. That was a weird thing when, when I did come back. Whenever I did. Guys on the road. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, but that was a weird thing when I came back recently for the Grand Prix. The people were saying, oh, why did they add that track? It's too short. And also people hated it as a classic, even though around this time it was sort of regarded as one of the shittier circuits on the F1 calendar. Oh yeah, but some people were like, oh, it's too short for an F1. I'm like, you can't hold a Grand Prix here. It's too short. Which is pure stupidity, considering these are the same people who like to complain about Tilka drums. But, you know. I don't care. I don't buy those arguments at all. And, but yeah, it still seems I'm the only one who likes this place. Even this version. I just, I just generally regard the long version of this and the modern version to be two different tracks, essentially. Same how I treat Silverstone. And that goes to Nürburgring as well. Damn, a lot of tracks having a hard time living up to their old version, aren't they? It's literally the only track that's pulled that off well. You know, Spa still hailed as one of the best tracks in the world by nearly everyone. And Spice should be, you know, completely different from what it used to be. And, of course, Old Spa, again, hailed as one of the greatest tracks there ever was. So, you know, Spa, they're the only people who managed to shorten a track and have it still highly regarded. Probably even more highly regarded, because it got changed so long ago that people might not even know of the old spa. It's kind of disappointing, but because they should. Actually, probably the reason they don't know of it because spa is in every game. But it's not. But old spa is not. Like, name a sim that doesn't have spa on it. You'll find next to none. Well, maybe not. Except The exception being our factor 2 because I don't know why. But that is why it is. Uh, very few have all spa. Ironically, our factor 2 does have all spa in it, but. Uh, they just can't be the same as everyone else can do with their R factor 2. It's like, everyone else has modern spa. Well, we should get spa as well. But we can't be like all those other plebs. We are a true simulator. So put an old spa. Fair is good. <laughs> I can't really argue too much with that. Speaking of old spa, why the hell has that not come out for a set of course yet? We're promising in like fucking February, at the latest. And like, it's nearly May. Who knows, please? 
At least Reason never promised it, otherwise we'd be getting 2018. Damn, look amigo. Shifting on three different simulators in the space of one lap. It's not even that long a lap. I think Manish has gotten to you, my old Penny, who was uh, chasing him. Because he's holding that gap after initial, after being attacked. It must be ages ago now. Feels like ages ago. What lap were we on? Oh, I'm a short shifting. Pushing wrong buttons here, trying to get up the lap counter. We're officially at a halfway point. Nice. Halfway point with three quarters of an hour gone. Not even three quarters of an hour. That's 40 minutes. It's gonna be an 80 minute race, yeah. An hour and 20 minutes. We could probably stretch out longer if I keep doing that every lap, but... I think I'm trying not to do that. Which means we're getting close to our pit stop. Turns out this is not such a heavy Grand Prix on fuel, which... I didn't think it would turn out like that. I thought with the amount of straights we have, it would, you know, we would have nearly more fuel use than others, but we're going to get well past halfway before we actually need to pit. We can nearly get to like 50 laps on a tank here. And of course, it's only a 71 lap race, so. Fuel isn't going to be really an issue at all. Obviously, in real life, uh, you would get around that by not taking full tanks because if you had fuel uses like this, because obviously they'll be faster. You know, no point filling up full tanks when you don't need it, but because of the way racing with AI works in this game, we will be taking full tanks, which won't help us take turn 3 by mixers. Well, if I don't get some uh, random guy shouting at me to turn up the AI and I'm a pussy, I will be disappointed in your YouTube comments. Like going, oh look at this guy, he drives like crap, still wins by 10 seconds. What a fool. Then I point to Imla and say, AI hey, were at the exact same settings. Fight me. Wonder if pit stops will help us out. Well, I don't know. They might, they might, who knows? Actually, this maybe just realized. I've never done a pit in here in this car. Well, that's going to be interesting. Signed, I've practiced well for this race. I've nearly never made a pit stop here. At least my pit stall should be a decent bit down the pit lane, so we don't we won't risk uh, just driving straight past it, which I've done. Too many times. I'll have a, I'll have a, i have a pit stop near the start of the pit lane, and because I haven't practiced pit stops, so I'll just go in there, drive past, and realize, huh, where's my pit box? Of course, I idiotically drove straight past it. Oh, look at that pack! Stop looking at the other cars and drive. This is how you're losing time. Speaking of Olivia Penny, he's just at the fast step. So, he could be attacking my niche soon. If he's still in turret, I believe he's still in turret. But he's definitely in clear air if he's just at the fastest lap. At least the Astrop isn't too bad on the outside of that corner. And even if you get wide, you can still put the power down on the Astrop. It's just the camber that gets you there. Surprisingly, they never fix on the, tra on the track. 
and on one hand I'm glad of it, and on one hand not. Obviously I'm not glad that when they shortened the track, they literally just joined it on to the track as it was meant. Ah, that's fine. And I didn't reprofile the camber. Like, you literally just bolted on the side. It's like, it, like look at the camber. It's like, that's a horrific way of joining the, the roads. But they just went with it, really. And on one hand, it's good. Because... I had a bit of a challenge that to the track, don't make it boring. Don't make it just flat and featureless and nothing to the challenge you just make another boring 90 degree corner. It made it into something interesting. Also we just Just got the fuel ish. How much fuel do we have? Oh shit, we are pitting this lap. For once the fucking Pick counter was actually accurate. I did not expect this. You see, usually when I'm giving an, F an estimate fuel in the setup screen, I usually add about 10, so that's where I gave you my figure that we'll, we could nearly get to lap 50 on a tank of fuel. Turns out we're not going to get to lap 50, as we're going to pit immediately. But. No one saw that. That was perfectly legal on the line. What's pit speed here again? This is a good time to ask the scrap. Oh, there we go. Eight. Right. Not a terrible pit entrance. That was. Oh, come on. There we go. Possibly one of my worst drives. The only saving grace I have had so far this race is I've kept it clean. It's gonna take 13 seconds of fuel. That seems a bit longer than usual, isn't it? Anyway. Looks like we're gonna maintain our position. There's McNish. There's Penny. We're gonna be well ahead of them. Unfortunately, unless they were coming into a pack of cars that haven't pitted yet. So this is gonna be fun. And it looks like uh, McNish and Penny are gonna come out clear at the back of this pack. So we won't have to deal with it. Damn, those guys just did not go. Of course, these are not lapped cars. We're only here because we made a pit stop. And they are driving... quite slow. So it's like we are in a real Ferrari. We're like stupidly faster than everyone else. Literally barring the guys there in points paying positions. It's like we're ridiculously faster. Obviously faster that corner there because he's making pit stop. Which is one of the things that they've never fixed and who knows if they do. Is that pit entrance here, which is frankly a bit dangerous, really, for what should be a grade one track, and is more or less a grade one track. And I'm not going to argue with that. It's grade one. I don't see any problem with it. It's pretty safe. Like, literally, the only thing he's got is that pit lane. And that you will have cars that are slowing down on the apex of a near blind corner. Which I'm guessing is why they leave the tarmac run off on the outside. Yeah, that's why they don't really, why they don't really want to add sort of a bit of grass there to you know stop people going wide. Apart from the fact that that grass get ripped up after one race weekend of idiots going wide there, but it's because if someone has to dart out there to avoid someone they didn't see slowly pitting in. Just giving a demonstration there of how you go wide at the last corner. Yeah, they sort of don't want... They want to be like, look, don't go up the back of him, bail out, it's fine. It's our fault for pulling a stupid pit lane in. So I don't see why they couldn't have just cut that off, so, off the track before the apex of that corner, but... 
There's probably good reasons, I'd imagine. So instead of having the cars are slowing down for pit lane, just go around the apex, the normal apex. They sort of the pull off track before then onto its own dedicated lane on the inside of the apex. You know, that only really applies for races where the feed is close enough so that that's actually a thing. And, of course, if it doesn't affect F1, tracks are not going to do anything about it. Because, you know, that's how it works. If you're not, if you're not a top class, tracks don't give a shit about you. They're not going to build a new pit lane because of inconveniences and it was quite a danger to other forms of racing when it's just fine in F1. If F1 say it's fine, how's the they know what they're on about, don't they? We've discussed it before, you know. <laughs> I can't even say that straight, really. F1 making sense for decisions, oh, fuck off. Yeah, we still watch it. Because we like seeing things go fast. That was actually a decent lap, if I say so myself. Not the fastest lap, but I think it was alright. Getting in a bad habit of doing that the last few laps, and so I need to get over that. Of course, it won't be the fastest lap ever, because I've got 125 years of fuel on board, so. Although I'm not 125 anymore, it's probably 100. In 15, maybe at this point, but still a lot of fuel. And I hope it's not a lot of fuel because as we used to get us to the end, we should be safe enough though. We, yeah, we got as far as lap 39 and the first bunch of fuel, so and we probably could have pushed that maybe another lap or two, so I reckon we. Could have six laps of fuel in hand at the finish, so that's plenty. We don't need to worry about that. And even if we do, we nearly a 10 second lead. So, lifting coast all day. If we needed that. I see big crowd anyway. You could argue that's breaking my immersion. A good crowd showed up to this race, but... You know that I don't get pedantic about that. To reason, of course. I can appreciate a good bit of immersion, but... I'm not going to buy race gloves just to... You know, drive a fucking sim wheel, am I? Which I don't think I'd ever wear gloves for sim racing. Because this has never been that big a problem. Mainly I'm just kind of driving for GT, so that's probably why blisters were never really been a problem. There were you know, I got blisters off this wheel before. But it only sort of happened once and never happened again. But I did try gloves before. And I used my second gloves. So, yeah, I just didn't really like him. I was like, nah, don't really like this. I just went back and there's no real need for them. When it comes to actual psyche, definitely wear gloves. <laughs> yeah. Other than the hottest days of summer, will I not wear gloves? 
when the temperature gets above 25 degrees, I might consider not wearing gloves. But the place is fair, the only place I cycle that gets that hot is France. And our friends are probably cycling fast enough that, you know, they'll need the gloves on anyway, so they don't get frozen off by the wind speed. You heard it right, boys. I cycle fast. Fast to me is about 20 kilometers an hour, so, you know. <laughs> Compared to this thing, which is just about to break 300 in the stills. You know, even going through this corner at 113. Yeah. That's fast. I cycle fast as well, you know. 20. No joke, though, but I have hit 60 kilometers an hour on my bike before. That shit's scary. Oh, there's a... There's a, like, just a... Rear wing out to run off there. Okay. A lot of the standards, that would be... Uh, the virtual safety guy on modern standards, but... Obviously, this is the early 2000s when, you know, someone hadn't died since 94, so it was like, eh, just pull it out of your local yellow and have a marshal run out for it. Because that was safe. Still happens today, in several places. Held it. Hmm, there's someone in the pit lane, and I reckon that's the owner of that rear wing that was in the runoff. Looks to be a bit of action going on throughout the field. And I'm not involved in it, of course. You know, the day the AI actually do something. I'm leading by 10 seconds, and don't see any of these shenanigans, you know? I'm trying to make a video here, guys. Do something for me. Another lapped car approaching here. Should be one behind us somewhere as well. Which, judging by the gap to McNish, has come out between us and McNish. Which, I'm gonna call it now, it's gonna get us an extra 5 seconds. At least. To our gap. Get past this one, it's another 5 seconds we got. We're gonna win this race with 20 seconds. If I don't get into the wall. Now that's an. New level of misspelling on the UI there. Of course, that means if I do manage to spin off and hit something, well, I gotta deal with it now. Also, goes for if I make a mistake lapping cars. I should have done it earlier, but that's just asking for trouble. I'm not sure what's the best line through there, that tight line I just did, or going out a bit that I usually do. What you do end up missing in this game is uh, sort of a live delta bar, or something similar that you have in a set of course in an iRacing with the likes of that. I know you can get it in normal police if you use a different, uh, if you use a HUD mod, but it involves using Dine HUD or whatever it is. However you're supposed to pronounce it. But like, I don't want to use that. And, you know, the HUD mods I've never really gotten to work for more than, as long as I got them to work for like two weeks, then up they came out, broke it, and, never, and I never managed to get it working again. In the way everyone else has. Maybe I'm just an idiot.
though. I'm perfectly happy with that. I don't see any problem with that box and the little tachometer. They're fine. I don't need fancy, you know, things like colors or fucking timing this or big lap counter or position indicator. Just need a little simple UI. That's you know fine. Just tell me what exactly what I need to know. Of course, this being an F1 wheel tells you quite a lot as it is. You know, in the Spectre of F1 wheels, this doesn't actually tell you a whole lot, but still enough. Is this guy going the fence on me? Oh fuck off! You're lap down. Hey, right. get out of the way. This gives us something to do. It's like the purpose of the lap cars to uh, race leaders. It's just something to do. You know, I reckon if you're leading a natural F1 race, you're less concerned about having fun and just more concerned about getting past them as quickly as possible. Yep, good thing I didn't go for the dive there. Knew he was going to pinch. You really have to get beside him for the corner for these ones. Because there's no gap there otherwise. Fuck it! Shouldn't have done that, but did it anyway. And we're gonna let this car through. Fuck's sake, cool tart, hold it together. Oh, not you fool. What? There we go. Wait, how, what lap were you? 52. We got to lap 52 before I spawn. What sorcery is this? This isn't just the AI being easy, this is just me actually getting my shit together. Possibly because the AI seems to be slow today, but I don't know. I'm just getting my shit together. Even before I leave it at the same sentence for next race in Monaco and... Well, fuck it. I just answered my own point, really. <laughs> I'm not going to make the AI any faster because next race is Monaco. But I'm going to be slow enough there as it is. Like, oh dear. So I'm going to take this one because we are going to crash out in Monaco next week. Not next week, whenever we're doing it. It could be next week, actually. Maybe it is. I don't have the dates for the calendar because, well, I don't have the dates for the actual F1 calendar in my head, so why am I going to remember the dates for this one? So yeah, look forward to that next time. Like, I could... Technically, I could skip it on the same grounds that I skipped Sepang. Even though the mod for Monaco isn't as bad as Sepang, or anywhere even near as bad as it. It's not the best thing in the world. Far from the best. AI are questionable on it. But I feel that if you're going to do a season of full length F1 races, you gotta do Monaco. If only to crash out after 10 laps, you gotta at least try it. And we are gonna try it. Oh lord, we're gonna try it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a thing. Right, idiot, you did that last time and you ended up spinning out. So don't do it again. My food, go away. You're lap, you're lap down. Why are you, why are you doing this? I appreciate that you want to get to the car in front of us. Though I'm gonna be honest, if you're this far back, you're not gonna catch that guy. You're wasting your time. Let me make sure to check the results now. See if he, <laughs> see if he actually pulled that off. If he actually gets past uh, Jung ahead of us. Hmm. 
I'm going to go on to lap 55 with approximately 55 minutes left. Yeah, that means nothing, but stupid coincidences. We like them. Too much curb there. Can't really touch that curb at all. It, it just points you straight out. You know, all over the outside curve. Like, yeah, I could be an asshole and just go full speed through the runner, but I'm not an F3 driver. Yeah. Let's hold it together. Don't wreck. I know I already knew the circuit quite well, but I'm going to know this place by the back of my hand when we're down here. And like, I think like F1 drivers like over oh, a weekend they'll do. Oh, they'll do. Probably over a hundred laps, even with their fairly limited practice. You know, compared to other series like Indy, they like run three-hour practice sessions and may run a, one or two of those. Whereas in F1, you have about four hours in total of practice time. Yeah, this four hours you got two one and a half hour sessions on Friday, an hour on Saturday morning, and well, that's it. Even still, they will do about 100 laps over the weekend on track. So then if they do it, you know, for years, not an F1, over their career, they'll, they'll do hundreds of laps at tracks just in practice sessions, excluding private tests or anything like that, or even public tests, and they, for, you know, you know, an official test, they'll do hundreds of laps just Testing. It's like, their track knowledge must be. You'd hope so. That's quite impressive. Like I said, I think BBC a few years ago actually did a feature where they actually. where they just gave a whiteboard and a pen to F1 drivers and got them to draw out the outlines of tracks. They were a bit off. <laughs> it's funny how far off they were. But it also gives an insight to how they think of the tracks. It's one of these things that pull us up together, actually. It's not being embarrassingly slow like the other cars we've left. Like we're gaining on it and gaining significantly each lap, but. It's not being embarrassing. At 58 of 71. 13 laps to go. Which would be nothing if this was Bristol. Hey! I know I did that. Nice view, though. Here's an interesting one to you. Do F1 races that tend to last a lot shorter, do they get less uh, lower attendances as a rule? Maybe, but. Of course, you got the exception, which is Monza, which always has a near full house and big crowd, despite being year and year the shortest Grand Prix. Now, this fucker is just messing with me. But that's possibly just because it's Monza, and, you know, everyone has to go to Monza. 
Look. If you're a furry fan, you must do it. If you don't, you're not a furry fan and will be dragged out and shot. And if you're not a furry fan, you'll be like, hmm, need to do it. It's like pilgrimage. It's one of the. It's like, you know, like going to spa or an herbivore. It's like, you have to do it. You have to go to the great tracks. She seems like it'd be a fun race to go to as well. Again, like uh, Spielberg's got a nice setting. You know, it's in the park. That's nice. It's got a history, so you can make a make a holiday out of it. Hmm. I should go to the Italian Grand Prix. Been decided. But to be honest, I was going to if I was to go to the Grand Prix, I'd probably take Spa first. <laughs> and there were practicality for reasons. If I was to go to the Grand Prix, I'd probably go to Silverstone. And then I'd have to deal with all the Hamilton fans. But that assumes by the time I can afford to go to a Grand Prix, Hamilton will still be in the sport. Well, if all goes well, that would be true, but you never know. Hamilton could pull a Rosberg at any, any moment. Anyone could. And it wouldn't be weird. And then Hamilton would probably realize his life is pointless without F1. <laughs> he's, one of, he's definitely saw a race to that. He races or he dies. It's quite the nice thing about the battle we've got going on, is that it's between those two very... very real races, true races, if you say. Hamilton and Vettel. They do nothing about race. And no people like to make much about Hamilton. Oh, look at him, he's going off all around the world, he's... Doing this and that, he's partying, he's playing music, he's walking, he's dog, he's doing shit like that. They say it as if, ah, oh, he's not interested in F1. It's like, I, I don't personally give much, read more than two shits about Hamilton, right? And yet these professionals that analyze him don't realize that. Not seen, this guy is nothing without racing. If he didn't have racing, he'd be clueless. I know it's obviously where he got his fortune from, so you could say, ah, oh, he wouldn't be able to afford to do any of this shite without racing. That aside, his, his life would have no point without racing. Same with Vettel. You could argue even more because, you know, we don't see Vettel doing anything really aside from racing. You know, that's probably more because Vettel is very private. You know, if, you know, if Hamilton was as private as Vettel, we probably wouldn't know about any of this extra stuff he does, so... And um, it's still, it's still all revolved around racing. The way they talk about their need for racing... Yeah, that's why I don't buy all the oh, Hamilton's distracted bullshit that we had uh, the last few years when he was battling Rosberg who came across as more, you know, more dedicated to the job, and maybe that was true. I don't know. But then, Rosberg retired and obviously showed, well, he doesn't need racing, does he? He's like, no. I'm done. I mean, though I could easily see him, sh him showing up again somewhere else when he realizes that and this racing thing was, was kind of fun, I want to do it again. But, you know, that, that will be seen and that happens. Well, that'll be how that is and I'm going to better race here with this, from this left car than I was from any of the other cars that have the grid, so... Fair play to you, Alex Young. And now please, can you fuck off? What's the gap? Four seconds. Thanks! Thanks, lapsed car! Fucking bastard. It was fun and all that, but... Inconvenient. At least we got four seconds. Maybe it's not the end of the world because 
Yeah, Magnus is just gonna catch him. And he lose all that time again. And I will spin that turn tree. <laughs> it's happened. It's happened. <laughs> Where's it still? So we have only 10 laps to go. And then I spin that turn tree. Not a full 360 measure catchers, but it's most definitely a spin. And Jesus, I just looked at the mirror. There's a pack of cars following McNish. That doesn't look good. And now there's only a two second gap, so it all came together in the last few laps. Aren't you glad you stuck around, aren't you? The two people that did? Who did stick around? I know Marzen likes this stuff. Hey Marzen. You still watching? Hope you are. Anyone else? I don't think so. Of course I can see the analytics and I'm just pretending that they don't work. I'm pretending that they're wrong. Because otherwise I'm doing shite in general. Like no one watches my stuff. They turn off after one minute and just like, I'm done with this guy. Yeah. I just, I'm really just hoping that's not accurate. And no, I'm guessing it is. I knew, that's not gonna stop me. I set myself a challenge and I'm gonna finish this off because I have no other ideas for this YouTube channel, do I? And even if I do have other ideas, I won't spoil them for you. I'm lying, I don't have any other ideas. Not at the moment, anyway. What lap are we on? 65. Six laps to go. Or approximately seven minutes. So just be, be about an hour and twenty-five minute race. Actually, it didn't turn out to be as short as I thought it would, but be nice. Right. In before I forgot to press the record button. Of course, that comment's meaningless if true. Is if you need explaining for that one, please go to the special school. <laughs> Nearly too much curb there. Slight slide. Magnish hasn't gotten past uh, Young yet. And with five laps to go with the line, that should be it. He shouldn't get past him. Even no, even if he, even if he does, we have enough of a gap. I know you could probably tell this from lap 20 that the victory was more or less assured, but you never know me. I could have easily been it. Like I've only spun it twice this race. Twice. And they even have been bad spins, like my last spin here at turn 3. What did it cost me? It just cost me like 3 seconds or something like that? It's quite good, all things considered. And then there was the other one that I've forgotten. It has so little significance. Of course there was the nearly every second lap going making a half mistake at turn three, but even those didn't really cost too much time because I managed to not spin it. So I just lost a little bit of time, but not as much as I would. Alright, four laps to go at the line. Actually not four, only five one. And we know yeah, there's four laps to go at the line. Can't count. This is not the time for counting. So it's the time for driving and keeping on track. Which looks like we're gonna do. Am I actually gonna win a race? I don't think. Apart from that uh, R Factor 2 race in Silverstone, uh, where the AI all pitted, which are not count as victory, this could be the first victory I post on this channel. Took me a year. But this could happen. What the hell? 
I've crossed it, haven't I? We're gonna crash in the last lap. It's, no, it has to happen. No, I've declared victory. Four laps from the end. We're not gonna be allowed to keep this. This is not gonna happen. This won't be allowed. You can't do that. I can't win. Or the record is gonna corrupt. That's what's gonna happen. There you go. I'm gonna finish it. And the recording is gonna corrupt. I've called it right here. Again though. If you're watching this, that means recording didn't corrupt. Which actually that that'd be a spoiler. Hmm. There you go. Three laps to go. Those cars in the mirror are getting smaller. Big turn tree nice and easy. Not gonna spin there. Not gonna spin. Don't spin. Don't spin. Don't spin. That's actually gonna happen, isn't it? Nice. Also, be a nice twist on history that this will be a win for the number two driver in the Ferrari here, in which he got the night in real life. We'll, we'll do what Ferrari would not let Barrichello do. We'll actually win. Of course, in the context of this race, there is no reason why team orders should come into effect uh, with Ferrari because Schumacher isn't even in the points in this alternate universe of weirdness. So, that's kind of irrelevant, but... I don't know. I'm just proving a point as I try to kill myself. But that scared me. Oh, to throw away a victory because I shifted down. I downshifted one gear too many. I mean, you always you downshift one gear too many. You heard you downshift two gears. I don't know. I know what I'm saying. I nearly fucked it. And that would have been the crap way to lose the race. Two laps to go at the line. Hold it together. Don't mess up. Good in fuel. No tire wear. Car is undamaged. Second place. You know, is nearly out of sight in the mirrors. You only have to do turn three one more time. We can do this. To be honest, if we couldn't, I should probably retire for sim racing. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, it's set up, come on, fool. You don't win this race, what are you? Held a, held a commanding lead, had the pace to run up front. I still don't win. Yeah, I should just retire. I'll just sell my sim equipment. Uninstall all the games. Just fucking retire. Anywho, no talk of retirement. One lap to go. Final lap of 2002 Austrian Grand Prix. As in real life, it looks like a Ferrari is going to win. As in real life, it looks like it's going to be Barrichello that will win. But unlike real life, we don't have politics to get in the way of the victory. We just have our own ineptitude to get in the way. Right, that's it. Last time we got to do turn three. Navigated it 70 times without spinning. Well, we also have a few other times where I messed up, but we forget those. Only spun once, sir. We don't need to know anything else. That is it. 
Only about half a lap to go. Two. Our first victory. First victory, actually. Been automobilista in a very, 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 very long time. First ever victory you've probably put in the channel. And probably will for a good long time. So, with only one car left to go. And. That's it. We have won. The Austrian Grand Prix. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm actually happy. That made my day. Ah. I know it's only a game. I know it's a championship that I'm making up the rules for that means absolutely nothing, but this is nice to not suck, doesn't it? I didn't suck. What the hell? We actually won. Fucking madness. Is there anybody to turn off trash control on this thing? Because don't want need to happen. Right. Yeah. There must be donuts. I don't care. I will find a way to turn off track control. Actually, I don't think there is. Damn it. Damn you, track control. You may have contributed significantly to this win, but you will not allow me to celebrate it. Ah. Curses. Track control. The work of heathens. Damn heathens. Anyway. That was Ash. I was the 2002 Austrian Grand Prix. As they can real life, a Ferrari is one, just it was the other one this time. So, if you actually watched all this, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in Monaco, where we'll probably fail spectacularly. But until then, we'll just do half a donut because that's all traction troll allow me to do. <laughs> see you then. <laughs>